What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out ten WWE wrestlers who hilariously trolled their opponents in the ring. It's something about being a good heel. When you're a good heel, you can get into your bag. You can control. You control your your opponent. And play mind games, and and that's always something an interesting dynamic in wrestling. And that's why a lot of people tend to gravitate to heels more because when you can get into that troll, that asshole, that rogue bag, it makes the match even that much sweeter. And it makes the baby face, you want to see the baby face even win that much more. So we're going to check this out. Appreciate all love and support on the channel, man. Let's do the damn thing. The WWE wrestlers take great pride in trolling their opponents. Of course. This trolling is always a great mental tactic, which in theory should give them a psychological edge in the match. The ways wrestlers have trolled their opponents have varied over the years. From stolen finishes to mocking signature mm -hmm. taunts, there have been some memorable and hilarious incidents of trolling throughout WWE's mm -hmm. decorated history that net. need to be seen to be believed. But which times were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 times a WWE wrestler outright trolled their opponent in the ring. You gotta love it, man. Good heel work is great. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Number 10, CM Punk trolls the big show. Mm. The Straight Edge Society was a vastly underrated stable that was never given the proper treatment they deserved. Whilst each member of the stable was talented, WWE just didn't seem to want to present them with any ounce of credibility. Yeah. This would be clear during their 2010 feud with The Big Show. The group's leader, CM Punk, would lead the charge against the 7-foot giant and the feud escalated when the group broke Big Show's hand using the steel steps. Mm. Now, to try and get the storyline <laughs> over, Punk would begin to wear a custom-made I Broke Big Show's Hand t-shirt. Punk would wear this for all television appearances during their rivalry, as he would even wear the t-shirt for SummerSlam 2010 showdown between the Big Show and the Straight Edge Society. This was one of the only highlights of a disappointing rivalry which ended up completely burying the once promising faction. Yeah, WWE definitely dropped the ball when it came to the Straight Edge Society for CM Punk. Number 9, Seth Rollins wears Dusty Rhodes' attire. Uh, one of the most acclaimed feuds of 20... Good fan when he came out there with the polka dots on like dusty uh, like uh, cody rose dad used to wear i was like this is great this is why seth rollins is at the top in wwe he is killing it 2022 has been the feud between seth rollins and cody rhodes rollins would be rhodes's first feud following rhodes's wrestlemania 38 return and both men delivered some exceptional matchups mm -hmm. the final match of their feud took place inside a hell in a cell and this was an epic matchup mainly due to rhodes going into the match with an incredibly serious pectoral muscle tear rollins would try to get into rhodes's head before the bell even rang as rollins would wear dusty rhodes's iconic polka dot attire yep. for the match this was a brilliant touch from Rollins and certainly made the match even more memorable. That was so good. Some man. fans questioned if it was appropriate for Rollins to be wearing an attire to mock a deceased talent, but Rhodes without a doubt would have spoken up if it was an issue. Yeah. Remember I mean he that's the thing. I'm sure they approved of it or whatnot. And I'm sure Cody understands the business. It's all about the storytelling, really. And to come out there with his dad's signature polka dots to get under his skin. It's fantastic. Story theory taunts Cody Rhodes. Speaking in the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, during his last WWE run, he portrayed a notorious character known the as Stardust. Stardust. This character was not well received by fans and it was actually one of the reasons why Rhodes left back in 2016. Mm -hmm. When he returned to WWE in 2022, it was only natural that wrestlers would mock and troll Rhodes for his past gimmick. This was on full display during Rhodes' match with Theory on the May 9th, 2022 edition of Raw. During the match, Theory would perform Stardust's signature. Mm -hmm. It was hilarious and received a great reaction from the crowd, which showed that fans clearly remembered Rhodes' days as the Prince mm -hmm. of Dark Matter. <laughs> Number 7, Tyler Breeze dresses as Nikki Bella. And leading up to John Cena and Nikki Bella's match with The Miz and Maurice at WrestleMania 33, Cena and Nikki took part in a mini TV feud with Tyler Breeze and Fandango. The work of both Breeze and Fandango received a ton of praise from fans as they were incredibly entertaining as a comedic duo. I remember people were really buying into what they were doing. It's just WWE didn't want to really take it, like capitalize on it more like they should have. But they, they definitely, the fans were enjoying their segments. 
One of the most memorable moments of this TV feud was the time that Breeze decided to dress up as Nikki Bella. Breeze would dress as Nikki on a number of occasions, and Breeze absolutely nailed the humorous role. According to Breeze, it was seen as idea for Breeze and Fandango to work with himself and Nikki during the build to WrestleMania 33. Cena reportedly believed that WWE should have been doing more with the two talents, and this led to Brizango receiving substantial TV time during this time. Number 6. Rick Rude's Special Attire Rick Rude was one of the best damn. heels in WWE during the 1980s. Yeah, yeah, Rude was a master <laughs> at getting into his opponent's head to gain what an advantage. No comment. Advantage leading into huge matchups. One of Root's most notable heel tactics saw him use his attire to mock his opponents. Yeah, Take, for instance, during his legendary feud with Jake the Snake Roberts, during the feud, Root would reveal a special version of his tights which had Roberts' wife airbrushed onto them. Alright, bro. We gotta, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta run the fade. That's what you call being a good heel. Hey, we gotta run the fade, bro. You, that that's some heel like tactics right there. We we gotta run the fade. Let's let's run it. Let's run it. <laughs> it was an ingenious way to elevate the feud and just showed how low Rude was willing to go. Roberts wasn't a fan of including his wife in this manner, so he tore off the tights on television. Number five, oh, wow. Lacey Evans mocks Seth Rollins. Now, the main event of the Extreme Rules pay per view in 2019 saw a mixed. This was the infamous pay per view when Becky Lynch caught the end of days oh my god still one of the best heel moments from baron corbin ever oh tag man. match as lacey evans would team up with baron corbin to take on becky lynch and seth rollins now, for what it was the match was fun and it featured some memorable spots this was the match which saw yep. lynch receive an end of days from corbin and fans <laughs> suspect that this could be a sign that intergender wrestling was on its way to wwe equal rights equal fights <laughs> <laughs> Another key talking point about the match was Evans' attire. So on the back of her shorts, Evans had Seth written across her backside. This was a rather unique way of Evans oh, to wow. try and antagonize Lynch ahead of the bell officially ringing. I didn't even know that. It was a smart way to use in-ring attire to further a personal issue. Hey, I mean, yo, she, I, I, she over there rubbing on my man's pecs. <laughs> for Rob Van Dam performs Triple H's water spit taunt. In 2002, WWE decided to reintroduce two world titles. The WWE title would be on SmackDown, whilst the world title would be on Raw. Mm -hmm. The world title would be awarded to Triple H on Raw as Brock Lesnar was WWE Champion and he was exclusive to SmackDown. Triple H's first feud as world champion would be against popular star Rob Van Dam, and there was a huge push internally at the time for RVD to be crowned champion. Mm -hmm. He had built up a genuine connection with the fans and they were ready to accept him as their guy. Unfortunately, Vince McMahon wasn't quite ready to make RVD world champion, and he was subsequently defeated in his world title opportunity at the Unforgiven pay-per-view. The match itself was passable, but it did feature RVD trolling Triple H in a downright hilarious manner. <laughs> RVD would perform Triple H's trademark water spit taunt to get in the head of the world champion. This marked the first time that anybody had copied Triple H's taunt, and it was a highlight of the match. That <laughs> he was bad. And you know what's crazy is sometimes I know I, I said at the beginning of the video usually the heels are the ones that do the the trolling which we we see but it's always cool to see a baby face do some trolling as well. It's always good when you want the good guy to kind of you know you know go a little roguish get you know get back at the heel in some some way some fashion I, I can always appreciate that and this is one of those situations formation of triple h and rick flair's partnership number three aj lee turns into nikki bella aj lee was a massive overachiever in wwe and seemingly managed to deliver with every gimmick and character she was given lee would do everything in her power to make her storylines work and this included going outside the box with her presentation mm -hmm. take for instance during a 2014 feud with the bella twins aj was set to face brie bella on smackdown and she decided to dress as nikki bella for the match aj <laughs> delivered nikki's mannerisms perfectly and she would even use nikki's theme song to further irritate her arch nemesis <laughs> number two cm punk dresses as jeff hardy I think I the rivalry between too. cm punk and jeff hardy was one of the highlights of wwe so television good. in 2009 so good the feud was extremely personal and the feud successfully propelled both men to new yeah. heights 
Fantastic Perhaps the rivalry dude. took place in the summer of 2009 as the two would collide in a steel cage match on SmackDown. The match had the added stipulation that if Hardy lost, he would be forced to leave WWE. Mm -hmm. Hardy would ultimately lose the match, officially departing WWE in the process. But on the following week's SmackDown, Hardy's iconic theme song would play to the shock <laughs> of fans. However, this wasn't Jeff Hardy. It was Punk dressed as the charismatic Enigma. <laughs> so Punk would then mock all of Hardy's signature taunts and gestures. Oh, so for Punk to gain even more heat. That's fans so that good, Punk bro. Punk was the top heel on SmackDown. That's so good, Number one, bro. Seth Rollins brings back the Shield attack. Seth is on here multiple times. When Seth came back out there with the Shield gimmick to go against Roman, once again, Roman is a heel. Seth is a heel. But Seth is so good at just the mind games. Oh, that was fantastic. Tyre. But the Universal title was on the line at the 2022 Royal Rumble so in a match good. between Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. The two would collide in a tremendous matchup. The match was already off to an iconic start as Rollins decided to bring back their shield attire to get into the head of the Universal Champion. During an interview with Digital Spy, good. Rollins revealed what led him to bring back the popular attire, and he stated, Fortunately, the event was in St. Louis, which is a short drive from my home in Iowa, where I kept all my old stuff. So I had a few friends come up for the show, and so I had to have them put it in the backpack. My mom packed it and delivered it to the guys, and they brought it down. Rollins using the attire received a great reaction from oh, the yeah. audience, mainly because it was so unexpected. It was so good, but Following bro. him using the attire, as well as the aforementioned Dusty so Rhodes good. attire against Cody so Rhodes, good. there's now an expectation that the former WWE champion is going to troll his opponent whenever he's given the opportunity. But there you have it, folks. 10 WWE wrestlers I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I'm not going to lie to you, Seth Rollins, easily. Whenever they're able to get the WWE Championship back on Monday Night Raw, he is easily the number one contender in my eyes. Him, probably Kevin Owens, are easily two people that deserve to be champion on Monday Night Raw. He has been killing it. He is fantastic. His heel work is great. He, he's just good. This is honestly one of the best runs for Seth Rollins. Outside of his first time going heel, this has been some of the best stuff he has done. I loved every second of it. At first, I wasn't a big fan of his gimmick, the overzealous laughing, like he's like the Joker of WWE. But after getting used to it and the feuds he's had, fantastic, bro. And he is what you call someone that knows how to troll their opponent, and I love it. So comment down below. Let me know who was your favorite wrestler like that i guess you could say that was good at trolling their opponents who's your favorite wrestler that you can think of that was you just love the way they used to get under their opponent's skin let me know down below but i appreciate all love and support road to 100k appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace